probably the biggest thing that we need to know. Men are insecure. Men are really insecure. Now, of course, they don't show you that because they have to be all like, I am strong and tough and not intimidated by anything. But inside, they are very insecure. Men feel like imposters who are about to be discovered as inadequate or actual failures. Uh, social, social researcher Shanti Feldman does a lot of surveys of men, and she asked men about this statement. I am not always as confident as I look, true or false. 76% of men said they always feel that way. Ooh, I am not always as confident as I look. Christian psychologist Dr. Kevin Lehman puts it this way. The number one fear of man is to be rejected or found to be inadequate. So, I'm going to give you practical applications for all of these things, and you can take some notes if something appeals to you. I'm not going to you know, talk super slow, so only write down the things that seem to like agree with you. But here's a practical application. Resist pointing out his flaws and failures. That would be probably a good idea. Don't continue to bring up his old mistakes or sins of the past. No one likes that, actually. In other words, if you need to bring up something you're upset about, keep it current. Don't say, you always, you never talk about the specific thing that's happening right now instead of flinging all the old junk, you know, reminding him of all of his past mistakes. Okay, number two revelation. Men are slower to process their thoughts than women. We've talked about this before. But as a result, they often default to either withdrawal or silence during a conversation that you're trying to have with them. So either they withdraw, become silent, or they become defensive with an angry outburst as a defense mechanism when a disagreement or a difficult conversation begins. In fact, surveys of men reveal that most of them have found, most of them have found it actually more difficult to work through problems by talking about the situation. I thought that was really bizarre. Women, that's how we work things out. Most of us, we have to talk next. Don't you kind of do that? I do that. Like, I just have to talk about it. Even if it's just in the air. Or I mutter around the house a lot. <laughs> what we know when I walk to the door, and I'm like, just muttering to myself. But I mean, I have to like process verbally. Well, men actually said it is more difficult to work through problems by talking about the situation. See, they're just wired differently. So, practical application give them time and space to think and process. And we've used this sentence before, but you can say something like, you know, like let's say you're concerned about how much he's drinking or how much time he's bowling instead of being with the family or whatever the thing is. You can say, you know, I'm kind of concerned about this, and could you pray about that, think about it, and let's talk about it again tomorrow. And he's like, Shh. she's not pressing me into talking about it right now. I have to think on my feet, and, and she's wanting me to agree with her. And if you give him that time and space, it's super helpful for most guys. Number three, in terms of revelations, oh, this is huge. Men don't like being questioned and challenged all the time. This was a huge finding. Here's what one of the male authors wrote. They res we resent being asked why we feel a certain way, or did a certain thing, or if that's really the right way to do that. They do not like that. They do not want to be challenged. It makes us instantly feel like you're judging us and finding us inadequate. Ooh. But we do this, don't we? And immediately what happens? They become super defensive. Either the anger kind of defensive or they withdraw the silence and you know, whatever their temperament is, right? But they do not like being questioned and challenged all the time. So the practical application is be a quiet, attentive listener when he's explaining something he's feeling, thinking, dreaming about, whatever. Nod your head, listen, you know, especially if he's sharing something difficult, maybe even lay your hand on his shoulder or whatever, you know, just be like engaged with him, but you know, shut. Just listen instead of pressing in for more in-depth information or why you what feels that way or, you know, have you figured out that this is not going to work or, you know, if you need to address wrong or disturbing behavior, instead of asking, why did you do that or that's really stupid or what a jerky thing to do, instead say, Help me understand your thoughts here. Help me understand what you're thinking, how this is going to work. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Those are two sentences I've learned to use. The one we've talked about a lot, help me understand. But the other sentence I've learned to use is, can you tell me a little bit more about that? That doesn't sound challenging, does it? But it, 
they can't see him talking about it, so, you know, some stuff. Often Raul will come to the um, conclusion himself that, oh, this isn't, this isn't going to work. Because what all I said was, can you tell me a little bit more about that? And so he starts talking it out. Pretty soon it even sounds dumb to him. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's not going to work. You know what I mean? Well, sometimes we do the same thing, right? As you talk about something, we're like, oh, that's just not going to work. Same thing for them. But that doesn't sound very challenging. It doesn't sound like I'm questioning him or challenging him when I simply say, tell me more about that. I want, I'd like to hear more about that. Or just like clarifying kinds of questions, not, not like attack questions. 